Welcome back to my channel LinkedIn Pharma. Today's video is based on Light, Chapter 13, Class 8. Before starting this video, please like and subscribe to my channel LinkedIn Pharma. Let's start it. Introduction to Light Light is a form of electromagnetic radiation that our eyes perceive as radiant energy. It travels in waves and can be emitted, reflected, or refracted, enabling us to see and perceive the world around us. Its dual nature is both a wave and a particle, known as photons, has revolutionized our understanding of physics and plays a fundamental role in various aspects of science and technology. What makes things visible? Things become visible to us due to the interaction of light with their surfaces. When light, which is a form of electromagnetic radiation, encounters an object, several processes occur that allow us to see the object. Reflection the surface of the object reflects some of the incoming light rays. These reflected rays then enter our eyes, allowing us to perceive the object's color, shape, and texture. Absorption and emission Some of the incoming light is absorbed by the object's surface. The absorbed energy may then be re-emitted as lower energy light, which can contribute to the object's color and appearance. Transparency in translucency In transparent or translucent objects, such as glass or water, light passes through them with minimal distortion. This allows us to see objects on the other side, though they may appear altered in terms of color or clarity. Scattering When light encounters small particles or uneven surfaces on an object, it can scatter in various directions. This scattering contributes to the visibility of objects by illuminating areas that might not be directly hit by the primary light source. Our eyes receive the reflected, absorbed, or transmitted light and send signals to our brain, which then processes the information into the images and colors we perceive. In essence, it's the interaction between light and matter that makes things visible to us. Law of Reflection The laws of reflection describe how light behaves when it strikes a surface and is reflected. There are two main laws of reflection. The law of reflection the angle of incidence, the angle between the incident ray and the normal to the surface, is equal to the angle of reflection, the angle between the reflected ray and the normal to the surface. The first law of reflection, the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal to the surface all lie in the same plane. Incident ray, the incident ray is the incoming ray of light that strikes a surface. It's a straight line representing the path along which the light travels before reaching the surface. Reflected ray. The reflected ray is the ray of light that bounces off a surface after interacting with it. It's the light that is mirrored or redirected away from the surface, obeying the laws of reflection. Here's an example to illustrate these laws. Imagine a mirror placed on a wall. If you shine a light ray onto the mirror's surface, the light will be reflected according to the laws of reflection. Let's say the incident ray, the incoming light ray, makes an angle of 30 degrees with the normal, and imaginary line perpendicular to the mirror's surface. According to the first law, the reflected ray will also lie in the same plane as the incident ray and the normal. Since the angle of incidence is 30 degrees, the angle of reflection will also be 30 degrees, as per the second law. This means that the reflected ray will bounce off the mirror's surface at a 30 degree angle relative to the normal. In summary, the laws of reflection ensure that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are equal, and that the incident ray, reflected ray, and normal all lie in the same plane. These laws are fundamental principles in understanding how light interacts with surfaces and are the basis for how we see images in mirrors. Here are a couple of examples of angles of incidence and reflection. Example 1. Mirror Reflection Imagine a light ray shining onto a flat mirror. The normal is an imaginary line perpendicular to the mirror's surface. If the incident ray makes an angle of 45 degrees with the normal, the reflected ray will also make an angle of 45 degrees with the same normal. This is in accordance with the law of reflection which states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Angle of incidence, 45 degrees. Angle of reflection, 45 degrees. Example 2. Pool reflection. Consider a light ray entering a calm swimming pool at an angle. 
The water surface acts as a reflective surface. If the incident ray enters the water at an angle of 30 degrees with the normal to the water surface, the reflected ray will also leave the water at the same angle of 30 degrees, following the law of reflection. Angle of incidence, 30 degrees. Angle of reflection, 30 degrees. These examples demonstrate how the angles of incidence and reflection are equal when light interacts with a reflective surface, in accordance with the laws of reflection. Lateral inversion. Lateral inversion, also known as left-right inversion, is a phenomenon that occurs when an object is reflected in a mirror or any reflective surface. In this process, the object's left side appears as its right side in the reflection, and vice versa. Essentially, the object is flipped horizontally along a vertical axis. This reversal of orientation occurs due to the way light rays bounce off the mirror surface and reach our eyes. For example, if you hold a book with the title facing you and look at its reflection in a mirror, the text on the book's cover will appear reversed, as if you are looking at it from the other side. The concept of lateral inversion plays a role in our perception of objects in mirrors and is responsible for the familiar, mirror writing, effect often observed in reflective surfaces. Regular and diffused reflection Regular reflection and diffused reflection are two different ways in which light can interact with surfaces. Regular reflection Regular reflection, also known as specular reflection, occurs when light rays strike a smooth and polished surface, like a mirror or a calm body of water. In this case, the light rays bounce off the surface at consistent angles according to the laws of reflection. The reflected rays remain parallel and maintain their original intensity, creating a clear and well-defined image. Regular reflection is responsible for producing sharp and distinct reflections. Example of regular reflection. Imagine looking at your reflection in a mirror. The mirror's smooth and even surface allows the light rays to bounce off it without scattering. As a result, you see a clear and undistorted image of yourself, where all the details are preserved. Diffused reflection. Diffused reflection, also known as scattered reflection, occurs when light rays strike an uneven or rough surface. In this case, the surface is not perfectly smooth, so the incoming light rays scatter in multiple directions. This scattering causes the reflection to appear blurred and less focused. Diffused reflection is responsible for producing a soft, non-glossy appearance on surfaces. Example of diffused reflection. Consider sunlight falling on a sheet of crumpled aluminum foil. The irregularities in the foil's surface cause the incoming light to scatter in various directions. Instead of producing a well-defined image, the reflected light creates a soft and non-distinct glow, resulting in a matte or textured appearance. In summary, regular reflection occurs on smooth surfaces, maintaining the integrity of the reflected image, while diffused reflection takes place on rough or uneven surfaces, causing the reflected light to scatter and produce a less defined appearance. Both types of reflection play a significant role in how we perceive light and interact with our surroundings. Do we see all objects due to reflected light? Yes, the majority of objects that we see are visible due to reflected light. When light from a source, such as the sun or artificial lighting, interacts with objects, it can be either absorbed, transmitted, or reflected. Absorption Some objects absorb certain wavelengths of light and reflect others. The colors we perceive are the wavelengths of light that are reflected off the object's surface. For example, a red apple appears red because it absorbs most colors of light except for red, which it reflects. Transmission In some cases, light passes through transparent or translucent objects. This occurs when the material doesn't absorb or reflect the light but allows it to pass through. For example, clear glass allows light to pass through, which is why we can see objects through windows. Reflection The vast majority of the objects we see are visible due to reflected light. When light strikes an object, it interacts with the surface and is reflected in various directions. This reflected light carries information about the object's color, texture, and shape, which our eyes perceive and our brain interprets as an image. So, while there are instances of absorption and transmission, the primary way we see objects is indeed through the reflection of light. 
एग्जाम्पल इमेजिन यू आर स्टैंडिंग आउटसाइड ऑन अ सनी डे लुकिंग एट अ ब्राइट रेड बॉल द रीजन यू कैन सी द बॉल्स वाइब्रेंट रेड कलर इज बिकॉज ऑफ रिफ्लेक्टेड लाइट वेन सनलाइट फॉल्स ऑन द बॉल द सर्फिस ऑफ द बॉल इंटरैक्ट्स विद द लाइट इन दिस केस द रेड बॉल सर्फिस एब्जॉर्ब ऑल कलर ऑफ लाइट एक्सेप्ट फॉर रेड इंस्टेड ऑफ एब्जॉर्बिंग रेड लाइट इट रिफ्लेक्ट्स इट बैक टूअर्ड योर आईज द रिफ्लेक्टेड रेड लाइट एंटर्स योर आईज एंड एक्टिवेट स्पेशलाइज सेल्स कॉल्ड फोटो रिसेप्टर्स इन योर रेटिना दीज सेल्स सेंड सिग्नल्स टू योर ब्रेन विच देन प्रोसेस द इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड एंटरप्रेट्स इट इज द कलर रेड Additionally, the angles at which the light rays are reflected give your brain information about the ball's shape and size. This process occurs with every object you see in your surroundings. The colors, shapes, and textures of the objects are perceived through the interactions of light with their surfaces, primarily through the reflection of light. So, when you are observing the world around you, you are essentially observing the interaction between light and matter through the mechanism of reflection. reflected light can be reflected again certainly reflected light can indeed be reflected again leading to multiple reflections this phenomenon occurs when light bounces off one surface and then encounters another reflective surface altering its direction once more here is an example to illustrate this concept imagine you are standing between two parallel mirrors facing each other when you look into one mirror you see your own reflection however that reflection is not just of you it's also a reflection of the other mirror's reflection of you let's break it down step by step you stand in front of mirror a mirror reflects your image back to you this is the first reflection the reflected light from mirror a then reaches mirror b mirror b reflects the already reflected image from mirror a back to mirror a mirror a reflects the image again this time is the second reflection This process can continue indefinitely with each reflection becoming slightly dimmer due to the light being absorbed or scattered by the mirrors and the surrounding environment. This phenomenon is often observed in infinite mirror installations where multiple parallel mirrors create an illusion of depth as the reflections seemingly stretch on indefinitely. Each reflection is a result of the previous reflections creating a visually captivating effect. In summary, reflected light can indeed undergo multiple reflections when encountering multiple reflective surfaces, creating intriguing optical effects and illusions. Multiple images. Multiple images can be created through the process of multiple reflections, where light bounces off reflective surfaces and generates a series of images that seem to repeat or extend into the distance. This phenomenon is commonly seen in situations involving parallel mirrors or mirrored surfaces. Here is an explanation using an example parallel mirrors and multiple images imagine you are in a room with two large parallel mirrors facing each other when you look into one mirror you see your reflection however this reflection includes the image of the other mirror which reflects your reflection and so on this creates a sequence of images that seem to stretch infinitely into the distance for instance consider looking into mirror a 1 mirror reflects your image image 1 2 the reflected image in mirror a is then reflected in mirror b image 2 3 the reflection in mirror b is again reflected in mirror a image 3 4 this pattern of reflections continues creating an ever diminishing series of images image 4 image 5 and so on The concept of multiple images arises from the cumulative effect of reflections bouncing back and forth between the mirrors. Each subsequent reflection appears smaller and less distinct due to the gradual loss of light through absorption and scattering. This effect can be observed in certain artistic installations such as infinity mirrors where the arrangement of mirrors creates an illusion of depth and an endless array of images. The phenomenon serves as a fascinating demonstration of the interaction between light and reflective surfaces leading to the creation of multiple images that extend into the distance. Kaleidoscope. A kaleidoscope is an optical instrument or device that creates intricate and colorful patterns by reflecting and refracting light through a series of mirrors and other elements. It consists of a cylindrical tube with a viewing eyepiece at one end and a collection of colorful objects such as glass pieces or beads. at the other end 
the objects are placed within the tube in a symmetrical arrangement. When you look through the eyepiece and rotate the kaleidoscope, the objects inside are set into motion. As the objects move, they reflect and refract the light, creating a mesmerizing display of constantly changing and symmetric patterns. The multiple reflections in the arrangement of objects result in a symmetrical, intricate, and visually captivating visual experience. Kaleidoscopes are known for their ability to transform simple materials into elaborate and beautiful designs, making them both artistic and scientific tools. They showcase the principles of reflection, symmetry, and the dispersion of light while providing an enchanting sensory experience for viewer. Here's an example to illustrate the concept of a kaleidoscope. Imagine you're holding a kaleidoscope in your hands. You peer through the eyepiece and see a vibrant burst of colors and patterns. Inside the cylindrical tube, small glass beads of various colors are carefully arranged in a symmetrical pattern, and three mirrors are positioned to create a triangular reflective chamber. As you rotate the kaleidoscope, the glass beads inside start to tumble and move. With each turn, the beads bounce off the mirrors, reflecting and refracting light in different ways. The result is a stunning display of intricate and ever-changing designs. The symmetrical arrangement of the mirrors and beads ensures that the patterns maintain their balance and symmetry, creating a sense of harmony in the chaos of motion. For instance, if you have red, blue, and green beads inside, as they tumble and interact with the mirrors, you might see mandala-like patterns, symmetrical floral shapes, or even geometric arrangements that resemble stained glass windows. This captivating visual experience showcases the principles of reflection, symmetry, and the dispersion of light. It's a delightful example of how a simple arrangement of objects and mirrors can transform light into a mesmerizing display of colors and patterns, making kaleidoscopes both artistic and scientific marvels. Sunlight white or colored sunlight appears white to our eyes but it is actually composed of a spectrum of colors this phenomenon is known as white light dispersion when sunlight passes through a prism or a droplet of water as in a rainbow it gets refracted and dispersed this happens because light consists of different wavelengths and each wavelength corresponds to a different color the prism or droplet separates the various wavelengths revealing the colors of the spectrum the colors of the spectrum, in order of increasing wavelength, are violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. When all these colors are combined, they create the impression of white light. This is why sunlight appears white to our eyes under normal circumstances. However, under certain conditions, such as during sunrise or sunset, the path of sunlight through the atmosphere can be longer, causing shorter wavelengths, blue and green, to scatter more due to Rayleigh scattering. This leads to the dominant presence of longer wavelengths, orange and red, giving the sun a warm, reddish hue during those times. In summary, sunlight is a combination of various colors, but our eyes perceive it as white due to the mixture of these colors. The separation and dispersion of these colors can be observed through prisms, rainbows, and other optical phenomena. Dispersion Dispersion refers to the phenomenon where light is separated into its component colors, or wavelengths, as it passes through a material that causes different wavelengths to refract by varying amounts. This separation creates a visible spectrum of colors. One common example of dispersion is the formation of a rainbow when sunlight interacts with raindrops in the atmosphere. Rainbow is an example of dispersion. Imagine a sunny day with raindrops in the air after a rain shower. When sunlight passes through these raindrops, the different colors that make up white light are refracted and dispersed due to the varying angles at which they exit the droplets. Refraction As sunlight enters a raindrop, it slows down and bends due to the change in medium from air to water. Dispersion The different colors in white light have different wavelengths. Shorter wavelengths, blue and violet, are refracted more than longer wavelengths, red and orange, as they exit the raindrop. Separation of colors, the refracted light exits the raindrop and spreads out into a circular arc of colors. The shorter wavelengths are on the inner edge, closer to the center of the circle, and the longer wavelengths are on the outer edge. Formation of rainbow, 
When you look at the dispersed light from many raindrops together, you see the full spectrum of colors arranged in an arc, creating a rainbow in the sky. This phenomenon occurs due to the interaction between light, the medium. In this case, raindrops and the way different wavelengths are refracted differently. The dispersion of light is responsible for the beautiful display of colors in a rainbow and as a visual representation of how white light is made up of various colors with different wavelengths. What is inside our eyes? Inside our eyes, there are several complex structures that work together to allow us to see and perceive the world around us. Some of the key components inside our eyes include Cornea. The cornea is the transparent front surface of the eye that helps focus incoming light onto the lens. It plays a crucial role in the initial bending of light as it enters the eye. Iris. The iris is the colored part of the eye surrounding the pupil. It controls the amount of light entering the eye by adjusting the size of the pupil. Pupil. The pupil is the black circular opening in the center of the iris. It regulates the amount of light that enters the eye. The pupil gets smaller in bright light and larger in dim light. Lens. The lens is a transparent, flexible structure located behind the iris. It fine-tunes the focus of incoming light onto the retina. The process of changing the shape of the lens to focus on objects at varying distances is called accommodation. Retina. The retina is the innermost layer of the eye that contains specialized cells called photoreceptors. These cells, known as rods and cones, are responsible for detecting light and converting it into electrical signals that the brain can interpret. Optic nerve. The optic nerve is a bundle of nerve fibers that carries the electrical signals from the retina to the brain's visual processing centers. It is responsible for transmitting visual information to the brain for perception. Vitreous humor. The vitreous humor is a gel-like substance that fills the space between the lens and the retina. It helps maintain the shape of the eye and assists in transmitting light to the retina. Sclera. The sclera is the white, tough outer layer of the eye that provides structural support and protection to the internal structures. Choroid. The choroid is a vascular layer located between the retina and the sclera. It supplies oxygen and nutrients to the retina. Aqueous humor. The aqueous humor is a clear fluid that fills the space between the cornea and the lens. It maintains the shape of the front of the eye and helps provide nutrients to the cornea and lens. These structures work together to allow the eye to capture light, convert it into electrical signals, and transmit those signals to the brain, enabling us to see and perceive our surroundings. Blind spot. The blind spot, also known as the optic disc, is a small region in each eye where the optic nerve exits the retina and there are no photoreceptor cells, rods or cones. This absence of photoreceptors makes it impossible for the eye to detect light or form an image in that particular area. Despite having a blind spot in each eye, we rarely notice it in our everyday vision due to the brain's ability to fill in the missing information from the surrounding visual field. Example of the blind spot An interesting way to experience your blind spot is through a simple experiment known as the blind spot test. Here's how to do it. 1. Materials needed, a piece of paper with a small dot on it, and another piece of paper with a cross drawn on it. 2. Steps. A. Hold the paper with the dot in your left hand and the paper with the cross in your right hand. B. Close your left eye and focus your right eye on the cross held in your right hand. C. Slowly bring both hands closer to your face while continuing to focus on the cross. D. At a certain distance, the dot on the left hand paper will disappear from view as it enters your right eyes. Line spot. The brain fills in the missing information, so you won't perceive a black spot, but rather the background color of the paper. A. If you move the dot closer or farther away, it will reappear in your vision once it's outside the blind spot area. This experiment demonstrates how our brains compensate for the blind spot by using information from the surrounding visual field. Our brains fill in the gaps and we perceive a continuous and complete image even though we have small blind spots in each eye. This process is one of the ways our brain processes visual information to give us a seamless and coherent view of the world. Care of the eyes. Taking care of your eyes is essential for maintaining good vision and overall eye health. 
Here are some important tips for caring for your eyes. Regular eye exams. Schedule regular eye exams with an optometrist or ophthalmologist to monitor your eye health and detect any issues early on. Protective eyewear. Wear appropriate eye protection when engaging in activities that could potentially cause eye injuries, such as sports, DIY projects, or working with hazardous materials. UV protection. Wear sunglasses that offer UV protection to shield your eyes from harmful ultraviolet, UV, rays, which can contribute to cataracts and other eye problems. Healthy diet. Eat a balanced diet rich in vitamins and nutrients, particularly those that support eye health, such as vitamin A, vitamin C, omega-3 fatty acids, and antioxidants. Hydration. Drink enough water to keep your eyes well hydrated. Dry eyes can lead to discomfort and irritation. Hygiene. Practice good hygiene by washing your hands before touching your eyes to reduce the risk of infections. Limit screen time. Take regular breaks when using digital devices to reduce eye strain and prevent digital eye fatigue. Proper lighting. Ensure proper lighting when reading or working to prevent eye strain. Avoid glare and harsh lighting. Follow the 2-0-2-0-2-0 o rule. For every 20 minutes of close-up work, take a 20-second break and look at something 20 feet away to relax your eyes. Adequate sleep. Get enough quality sleep to allow your eyes to rest and rejuvenate. Avoid smoking. Smoking can increase the risk of eye diseases such as cataracts and macular degeneration. Maintain a healthy lifestyle. Conditions like diabetes and high blood pressure can affect your eye health. Managing these conditions through a healthy lifestyle can help protect your eyes. Stay hydrated. Drink enough water to maintain good eye hydration and overall health. Know your family history. Some eye conditions, like glaucoma and macular degeneration, can have a genetic component. Knowing your family's eye health history can help you stay vigilant. Contact Lens Care. If you wear contact lenses, Follow proper hygiene and care instructions to prevent infections and discomfort. Remember that caring for your eyes is a lifelong commitment. By incorporating these habits into your daily routine, you can help preserve your vision and ensure the well-being of your eyes for years to come. If you experience any changes in your vision or discomfort, it's important to seek professional advice from an eye care specialist. Visually impaired persons can read and write. Visually impaired individuals have a range of abilities, and many are indeed capable of reading and writing through various adaptations and tools designed to accommodate their needs. Here are some ways visually impaired persons can read and write. Braille. Braille is a tactile writing system that uses raised dots to represent letters and characters. Visually impaired individuals can read and write in Braille using their sense of touch. Special tools, such as braille embosses and refreshable braille displays, allow them to convert digital content into braille. Screen readers. Screen readers are software programs that convert on-screen text into synthesized speech. Visually impaired individuals can use screen readers to access digital content, including websites, documents, and emails. These tools enable them to read by listening to the spoken text. Screen magnification. Some visually impaired individuals have limited vision and benefit from screen magnification software. This software enlarges on-screen text and images, making them easier to see. Large print materials. Many visually impaired individuals can read print materials if they are presented in larger fonts and high contrast colors. Large print books, documents, and materials are often available to accommodate their needs. Electronic Braille Displays These devices provide tactile feedback by displaying Braille characters dynamically, allowing visually impaired individuals to read digital content in Braille. Voice to Text and Speech Recognition Some visually impaired individuals use voice recognition software to convert spoken words into text. This technology enables them to write by speaking their thoughts. Accessible Formats Publications and materials can be converted into accessible formats, such as audiobooks, braille, or digital formats that are compatible with assistive technologies. Smartphone apps. There are numerous smartphone apps designed to assist visually impaired individuals with reading and writing tasks. These apps can read aloud text, identify objects, and provide navigation assistance. Tactile graphics. 
for those with limited vision, tactile graphics are raised images that can be read by touch. They provide a way to convey visual information, such as maps or diagrams. Assistive devices, various tools like magnifiers, talking calculators, and accessible computer keyboards are available to help visually impaired individuals read and write more effectively. It's important to note that the degree of visual impairment can vary widely, and what works best for one individual may differ from another. Advances in technology and a focus on accessibility have significantly improved the options available for visually impaired persons to engage in reading and writing activities. Non-optical and optical aids for visually impaired. Visually impaired individuals have access to a range of non-optical and optical aids to help them navigate their daily lives, read, write, and engage with the world around them. These aids are designed to accommodate varying levels of visual impairment. Here are examples of both types of aids. Non-optical aids. Braille, a tactile writing system using raised dots, allowing visually impaired individuals to read and write through touch. Screen readers, software that converts on-screen text into synthesized speech, enabling visually impaired users to access digital content. Screen magnifiers. Software or hardware that enlarges on-screen text and images for individuals with limited vision. Voice-to-text software converts spoken words into text, enabling visually impaired individuals to write by speaking. Voice assistants. Smart devices like Amazon Echo or Google Home can perform tasks based on voice commands, helping with information retrieval and tasks. Tactile graphics. Raised line diagrams and images that can be felt through touch providing a way to interpret visual information. Large print materials, printed materials with larger fonts and high contrast colors for individuals with limited vision. Audiobooks, narrated versions of books and other written content, allowing visually impaired individuals to access literature and educational material. Braille embosses, devices that produce braille documents by embossing raised dots onto paper, optical aids, magnifiers, Handheld or stand-mounted devices that magnify text or objects, aiding individuals with low vision. Telescopic lenses, glasses with telescopic lenses for distance viewing, helping those with reduced clarity in seeing faraway objects. Microscopes, devices that magnify objects significantly for close-up inspection. CCTV, closed-circuit television, a device that uses a camera to display magnified images on a screen, assisting with reading and writing. Electronic magnifiers, portable devices with screens that display magnified text and images, often with adjustable settings. Monoculars, compact telescopic devices for distance viewing, useful for spotting details or reading signs from a distance. Prism glasses, glasses with prisms that can redirect the line of sight, helpful for individuals with specific vision challenges. Color filters, glasses or lenses that enhance contrast and reduce glare, aiding individuals with certain visual conditions. Low vision glasses, custom glasses designed with specific magnification and optical enhancements to address individual visual needs. Both non-optical and optical aids play a crucial role in enhancing the independence and quality of life for visually impaired individuals. The choice of aid depends on the individual's specific needs and level of visual impairment. Advances in technology continue to expand the options available to support visually impaired individuals in various aspects of their daily activities. What is the Braille system? The Braille system is a tactile writing and reading system designed for individuals who are blind or visually impaired. It uses a set of raised dots arranged in specific patterns to represent letters, numbers, punctuation, and even musical and mathematical symbols. Developed by Louis Braille in the early 19th century, the Braille system provides a way for blind individuals to read, write, and communicate effectively through touch. Key Features of the Braille System Raised Dots The Braille system uses a combination of raised dots arranged in cells of six dots each. These dots are embossed on paper or displayed on specialized devices. Six dot cell. Each cell consists of two columns with three dots each. By using different combinations of these dots, various characters are formed. Alphabet and characters. 
The Braille system includes representations for the entire alphabet, numbers, punctuation marks, special characters, and even contractions to save space and simplify reading. Reading by touch, blind or visually impaired individuals read Braille by running their fingertips over the raised dots. The pattern of dots in each cell conveys the specific character or symbol. Braille grade levels, Braille is typically taught in different grade levels. Grade 1 Braille uses 1 to 1 correspondence between print letters and Braille characters. Grade 2 Braille involves contractions to increase reading speed and efficiency. Writing in Braille Writing in Braille involves either manually embossing dots onto paper using a stylus or using electronic devices that produce Braille output. Braille books Braille books and materials are produced using embosses that create raised dots on paper. These books provide visually impaired individuals with access to a wide range of literature and educational content. Importance of the Braille System The Braille system plays a critical role in providing independence, education, and access to information for individuals who are blind. It enables them to read books, textbooks, documents, labels, and other written materials. Braille literacy empowers blind individuals to communicate, learn, and participate fully in society. Despite advances in digital technology, the Braille system remains an essential tool for blind individuals, offering a tactile means of communication and literacy. It has significantly enriched the lives of countless visually impaired individuals by providing a pathway to education, information, and self-expression. Example Imagine a young student named Sarah who is blind. She is excited to receive her school textbooks in Braille format. As she opens the textbook, she runs her fingertips over the raised dots on the pages. Each page contains rows of characters formed by the arrangement of raised dots in Braille cells. For instance, Sarah encounters the word apple. In Braille, the letter A is represented by a single dot in the top left corner of the cell, while the letter P is represented by dots in the top left, middle left, and middle right positions of the cell. By feeling these dots, Sarah recognizes the word apple in Braille. She reads through the textbook, learning about history, science, and literature through the touch of her fingertips. At school, Sarah's teacher provides her with a Braille worksheet. Using a stylus, Sarah embosses the dots onto the paper to write the answers in Braille. The teacher, who is also trained in Braille, reviews Sarah's work by reading the raised dots with her fingertips. During a class presentation, Sarah wants to share a quote she found in her Braille textbook. She brings a Braille display, a device that converts digital text into tactile Braille characters. She connects the device to her computer and reads the quote in Braille to her classmate. The versatility of Braille technology allows her to participate actively in class discussions and share her insights. This example showcases how the Braille system empowers blind individuals like Sarah to read, write, learn, and communicate effectively using their sense of touch. Braille opens doors to education, independence, and meaningful engagement in various aspects of life. Some visually impaired Indians have great achievements. Certainly, there are several visually impaired individuals in India who have achieved remarkable success and made significant contributions in various fields. Here are a few examples. Dr. Rajendra Singh Pawar, Drive. Pawar is a visually impaired entrepreneur and co-founder of NIIT Group, a leading global skills and talent development corporation. He has played a key role in revolutionizing the Indian IT education system and promoting accessible education. Sudha Chandran Sudha Chandran is a renowned Indian classical dancer and actress. Despite losing a leg in an accident, she continued to pursue her passion for dance with a prosthetic limb, becoming an inspiration to many. Hari Prasad Chaurasia Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasia is a world-renowned flutist and classical musician. He is a master of the North Indian classical music tradition and has performed extensively worldwide, breaking barriers and setting high musical standards. Arunima Sinha Arunima Sinha, a former national-level volleyball player, became the world's first female amputee to climb Mount Everest. Her determination and spirit in overcoming challenges have inspired people globally.
Pranav Lal Pranav Lal is a visually impaired computer scientist and accessibility advocate. He has contributed to making technology more accessible for the visually impaired, including developing software and tools that enhance their digital experience. George Abraham George Abraham is a disability rights activist and founder of the World Blind Cricket Council. He has played a pivotal role in promoting blind cricket globally and providing opportunities for visually impaired individuals to participate in sports. Shekhar Naik Shekhar Naik is a blind cricketer and former captain of the Indian blind cricket team. He led the team to multiple victories in international tournaments, highlighting the talent and determination of visually impaired athletes. Padma Shri Awardi Drive Sambhaji the Fifth Chavan Drive Chavan is a visually impaired physician who has dedicated his life to providing medical care to underserved communities. He has contributed significantly to healthcare and medical education. These individuals have shattered stereotypes and showcased the limitless potential of visually impaired individuals in diverse fields. Their achievements serve as an inspiration to others, proving that determination, talent, and the right support can lead to exceptional accomplishments. Ravindra Jain Ravindra Jain was a renowned Indian music composer and lyricist. Despite losing his eyesight at a young age, he composed some of the most iconic and melodious songs in Indian cinema. His musical contributions enriched Bollywood and touched the hearts of millions. Lal Adwani Lal Adwani, also known as The Singing Saint, was a visually impaired Indian musician and devotional singer. He composed and performed devotional songs that spread messages of peace, unity, and spirituality. Helen Keller Helen Keller, though not Indian, is a globally celebrated figure. She was both blind and deaf but overcame these challenges to become an influential author, lecturer, and advocate for people with disabilities. Her story of triumph over adversity continues to inspire people worldwide. These individuals, along with the previously mentioned achievers, have proven that visual impairment is not a barrier to achieving greatness. Their determination, talent, and contributions have left a positive impact on society and serve as sources of inspiration for people facing challenges around the world. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.